With the recent release of Halloween Ends, what better time to rank the Halloween franchise from worst to best? Hey guys, welcome to the Movie Ranker, where I rank all things cinema, and today I'm going to be diving into the Halloween franchise. Um, not my personal favorite horror franchise, but I do rewatch them quite often. I'm more of a Friday the 13th fan myself, but I do love a lot of the Halloween entries. But there definitely is some bottom tier movies here as well. So this is going to be an interesting discussion, guys. we got 13 films, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's dive into these. So kicking things off in last place at number 13, we got Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Oh boy, this was a rough watch. It's just so incredibly dull and boring, and this movie is riddled with flaws. Uh, for starters, they take our likable Jamie Lloyd, and they make her a mute for most of this movie. <sighs> crazy, crazy decision there. And plus, they abandoned the ending of Halloween 4, where Jamie uh, became evil herself. But that kind of just gets thrown out the window as well. We get a really crazy uh, Loomis in here, like a little too over the top where he's not very likable either using Jamie as bait because that's how bad he wants to get Michael. Where before he was like the protector of people, now he just doesn't even care. He's completely lost it. Um, we lose Rachel who was such a great final girl in Halloween 4 and they replace her with Tina in this who is... One of the most annoying girls in this entire franchise. Uh, the kills are lame. The mask looks stupid. Has that long neck on it. They didn't even bother tucking it in. There's so many problems with, with, with this movie. Uh, one of the only redeeming qualities I feel like is one scene near the end. Where Jamie is hiding in the laundry chute. And Myers is stabbing through it trying to get her. That's like the only tense moment in the entire movie. And literally the only scene I watched this movie for. It's just so ridiculous. Like we get a scene where Myers uh, takes off his mask and he cries a tear. And Jamie's like, uncle? It's, it's just a very bad movie. Um, I hate Michael chauffeuring Tina around. This doesn't make sense. Yeah, he drives cars, but he's not going to be an Uber for people for the night. It's just, it just rubs me the wrong way. You get ridiculous cops in here that's places like silly, like carnival music when they show up. And it's just, everything in this movie is bad. There's really no redeemable qualities, except for that one scene I mentioned. And this easily comes in the last place for me. Next up at number 12, we got Halloween Resurrection. Now, this is just a plain old bad movie. Uh, this could easily be last in the franchise as well, but I feel like there's just a little bit more entertainment value in here and an almost so bad it's good type way <laughs> with how they treat Myers and Busta Rhymes and everything. But uh, yeah, I feel like the concept itself with this like reality TV show in Myers' house and all the cast members having GoPros was fairly uh, advanced, ahead of its time, I'd say. <laughs> because we didn't have movies like that back in the early 2000s. Uh, the internet was still uh, very basic and in its infant stages compared to now. So I have to give them kudos for that. Um, but yeah, everything else in this movie is pretty garbage. Um, killing off uh, Jamie Lee Curtis right at the start, Laurie Strode, was just like kind of a gut punch and ruining the ending of H2O, you know. That whole bait switch thing is terrible. H2 had such a great ending and then they just shit on it in this one. Um, Buster Rhymes poking Myers in the head and telling them to get back in the garage. It's just painful to watch because you're like, they're disrespecting the character. And you never do that. You never treat your villains like a piece of shit. Like, it's just crazy to me. And on top of that, the whole trick-or-treat motherfucker stuff and... You know, electrocuting him in the nuts and doing kung fu. It's just so bonkers. And it's like, who thought this was a good idea for a Halloween movie? It's beyond me. But like I said, there is some entertainment value here. Um, we probably get our worst final girl in the entire franchise. I think Tina's even better than the girl in this one. I can't remember her name. Maybe it's Sarah, I want to say. But the girl can't scream. She can't act. I hate the whole scene where she's coming with the chainsaw. And she's like, this is for Jen. 
and this is for Bobby or whatever the hell their names was. It's just so lame. And yeah, just not a very good movie. Even though, like I said, it does have some entertainment value. Um, I think the whole underground part of the house is kind of cool and creepy. It has a little bit of tension, but yeah, a bad movie nonetheless. Coming in at number 11 is easily the most divisive movie in the entire franchise, and that's Halloween Ends. Now, hold your pitchforks and your torches. I don't like the movie, okay? But I don't care if you like the movie. You can like it or you can hate it, and that's okay. It's your opinion. And don't hate me for my opinion, but this movie just doesn't work for me. It's not for the reasons that you think. Every time I say that, everybody's like, oh, you just don't like change. You want the same Halloween movie over and over. And that is bullshit. Not true. I actually really like what they did with the story, with Corey's storyline in this, our new main character. I think it was unique and interesting. But my problem lies with how they handled the character in the last act. I feel like we spend so much time setting him up and everything that it just feels like they kind of abandon it in the third act to go tell the story that we all expected they were going to tell, the Laurie versus Michael story. And it's just, it almost feels like we have two thirds of one movie and a third of another, and they just kind of smushed them together. And it just doesn't sit well with me. Uh, but to give this movie props, it has great directing. Um, probably the best acting out of all the new three, uh, the trilogy. David Gordon Green trilogy. I say this has the best acting. Uh, Allison is at her best in this movie. And Laurie Strode, I am I really like what they did with her character. They make her more uh, real, realistic a bit. More down to earth, I guess. But what they do with Myers is... God, it's just as bad as Resurrection. Like, Kung Fu and poking him in the forehead. This movie does it dirty too. I don't want to get into too many spoilers or anything. Because I know this is still a fairly new movie. But I absolutely hate how they handled the Myers character in this movie. And I don't care about his lack of screen time or whatever. It's the times he's on screen. They make certain decisions that just rub me the wrong way. Um, the finale. How they handled the finale in this. I thought was fairly good. But I feel like it's in the wrong movie. Like, I like how they handled Myers at the very end. But <laughs> put it in the back of a better movie. That's what I say. And also, I feel like this does not add up for our, our third chapter in the trilogy. Like, even though Kills and Halloween 2018 were very different from each other, they still felt like a story. Like it was part of the same story. Where this... It feels completely left field, like we're in a completely new Halloween movie, which is fine, but it just doesn't work for your final chapter of this trilogy. I know a lot of people like to say it does, and that's fine. They like to say, well, Myers and this whole trilogy was more about the whole town of Haddonfield and the evil. That's fine, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work for this guy. And that's my two cents. If I have anything else to add, I think that... The Corey character was great. I really do. I just hate how they handled him. And if this would have been a standalone Halloween movie with the way things played out, I think it would have worked a hell of a lot better because the rules and the lore in that just doesn't work when this is attached to 1978 and the other two movies in this trilogy. It's a stuff that doesn't add up. The rules get broken. And guys, I even rewatched this movie just to make sure because uh, I was like fairly mixed on it the first time. And on second watch, I actually disliked it even more. This is a two-star movie for me. I'm sorry, not sorry. Just my opinion. Maybe down the road in the future, I'll warm up to it. But as of right now, I just did not enjoy this film whatsoever. Like I said, it's fairly well made. It's well directed. Has some decent kills in there. But the story is a complete mess in my opinion. Next up at number 10, we got Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Now, just for disclosure, from here on out, these movies are more mixed on. I don't hate, and I don't think are bad movies per se. The ones below this, I feel like the bottom three are bad movies, personally. But from here on out, they're all mixed, okay? Until I let you know when we get into the good movies. So, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Funny story, this used to be my least favorite for the longest time, ever since its release. Up until a year or two ago. I started to warm up to it a bit on rewatches. I still have problems with it though. 
Um, I think this is our most brutal Myers we've ever gotten, which is awesome. I find that they linger on the kills just a little too long to where I'm like, okay, they didn't have, they could have cut that back a tiny bit, which is crazy for me to say because I'm all about the practical effects and the gore and the kills. But in this one, it's just, it just lasts too long. Like they're stabbing someone in the head, for instance, and it just keeps going over and over and over. And I get it, the guy's ruthless, but we, we I don't know. It just seems like we linger on the kills just a little too long for my taste, personally. Um, the Rob Zombie dialogue is still here too, which I'm not a fan of. It's not as prominent as it was in the first Rob Zombie remake, but it's still there, especially with like the ambulance drivers or the coroners, wherever the hell they are. Uh, Richard Brake, he the stuff he says is just disgusting, and it, there, he's not a likable character. As for the other characters, I think that they're better than in the first Rob Zombie movie, like Lori and uh, Daniel Harris's character, Annie. I feel like... They're written way better in this one. Uh, I like how they deal with their trauma and the psychological warfare that Michael put them through. It's real interesting. Um, Myers, don't like him in this. This is not Myers. This is just a giant that walks around with a mask in his hands. <laughs> Hobo Myers. Uh, he just doesn't feel like Myers to me. I'm sorry. Even though he's a huge beast, it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Um, neither does his hallucinations of the white horse and his ghost mom and all that shit. That takes me completely out of the movie. And it's just too bad because we get great performances in here. It's such an interesting take on their trauma. But then all the other crap in here just is completely left field and it takes me out of the movie completely. All the hallucination shit. I get it. It goes along with the trauma, but it still doesn't work for me. And it I never will, I don't think. It's bad when your movie has to explain what the imagery is at the very start, like explaining the white horse. It's like, if it made sense or whatever, we would pick up on it. You wouldn't have to tell us in writing at the start. Um, and on that note, I want to say Brad Dourif gives a hell of a performance in here. One of his best to date. And he's done many, many movies. I mean, he's friggin' Charles Lee Ray for God's sakes, but he kills it in this movie. He gives all of his emotion. Loomis, on the other hand, is a complete freaking dickhead, played by, uh, what's his name, McDowell. Uh, I hate the way Loomis is written in here. He's just exploiting, trying to make money off his book with, like, Laurie's trauma and that. And I get it, that's an interesting take on the character, but just makes him so goddamn unlikable. And it's not my Loomis, I'll just say that. At number nine, we got Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Now, I know this is a cult classic nowadays. When it was released, people hated it. Most people love it nowadays. And I'm right in the middle. There's things, just as much things that I love in here, that just as much things that I hate. Um, right off the bat, Tom Atkins is the man. Anything he's in, I love him. He, he's great in here. And so is the, the other lead girl. I can't remember her name. Uh, even the villain, Colonel Cochran. He's kind of cartoonish, but he's a great villain. Uh, I like the idea of how he's making these masks that will melt kids' faces when they're watching a certain jingle on TV and turns them into like snakes and bugs and shit to kill other people. Real cool concept there. Do not like <laughs> all the henchmen that are like in suits. They're these robots. I think that's silly and stupid. I think the whole Stonehenge idea thing is completely stupid as well and it makes completely no sense. The way they defeat Colonel Cochran is really silly as well. How he gets like this really white pasty face with a stupid grin when he dies. Like I said, there's just so much here that works. and But there's just as much here that doesn't. Um, great score. We got great atmosphere. Feels like a Halloween holiday type movie. But the sci-fi stuff just doesn't work for me. Love the supernatural stuff. But all the sci-fi, robotic, stupid stuff just is dumb to me. So, yeah, this one's right in the middle for me. Next up at number eight, we got Rob Zombie's Halloween. The first remake he did. And this one is interesting because everybody hates the fact that they show Michael as a kid being bullied. Showing through the shit that he went through to become the killer that he is today. And they try to make him more human-like, right? More realistic Take, strip away all the supernatural stuff, which he completely forgot in part two. He adds it all back in, which I don't get. 
if he's trying to go for a more realistic route, why wouldn't he stick to this this way, right? But I'll tell you what, for me, I won't I'm not gonna say it's a good choice to make him to give him a background and make make you feel sorry for him, but I appreciate that he tried something different. This isn't a copy and paste remake like a lot of them are. Um, the second half is more of a copy and paste remake of John Carpenter's Halloween, except they up the grittiness and the violence, right? Which is fine because the first half is completely different. And I do enjoy the first half. It does make My Michael Myers less scary in my opinion because we know too much about him. But again, I can appreciate that Rob Zombie tried something different. And it, it works for the most part. Um, but yeah, the kills are pretty brutal. <laughs> Especially when he's killing his stepdad and that and duct taping him and cutting his throat. It's pretty awesome. Um, Lori and her friends, I'm not a big fan of them. I know a lot of people love them. But I actually prefer the original cast here from uh, 1978. They just don't do it for me. I find they're not likable. I don't give a damn about Lori or Annie or any of them. And it's just unfortunate because the rest of the movie is fairly good. I think we're at the movies where I'm giving them a pass mark now. We're past the mix stage. <laughs> All these movies from now on are a 6 out of 10 or higher. I give them the pass mark. And this one's okay. It's not one that I run back to watching all the time because, um, I don't know. It's just a little bit bland for my taste, but it's well made and I'm not mad at it or anything. Of course, Rob Zombie had to throw in all of his white trash hillbilly dialogue in the here, which I'm not a fan of. Um, it's almost so over the top, like white trash, that it becomes a little bit entertaining in the way that they're yelling at each other and swearing and telling them, get the fuck over here and all this shit. I don't want to quote them too bad or I'll get demonetized on this video. But you know, like Ronnie and all them, the way they act at the starting is just kind of too much for me. But if you know Rob Zombie, he does that in most of his movies. So kind of know that going into this, but it's a good enough movie for me. Now coming in at number seven is Halloween Kills. I can't believe I had this movie at number seven. I figured it'd be way lower, but it is better than these all the movies I mentioned so far, in my opinion. Um, we get a really brutal Myers who's on a mission pretty much just to kill and get home, <laughs> killing everybody on his path. Um, yeah, the cinematography is great. I love the kills. It's a basic slasher movie. There's not much story here. This is really the middle chapter in this trilogy where it's basically just a stepping stone from getting from part one to part three. Um, I hate, I absolutely hate when we get to the hospital though. It really bogs down the movie and it doesn't add anything interesting. Yes, it shows how a mob mentality can be and how people act. But we don't need that type of social commentary in our Halloween movies. And even if you want to add it in here, there's a better way to put it in here. It's really beaten over your head in this one. Where it's like, okay, I get the point there. And this is how there's no authority in this movie. Like the cops or the feds. They're not nowhere to be found. It's just all these townspeople, which makes completely no sense. And yeah, the dialogue is atrocious. I think even worse than Rob Zombie's dialogue with evil dies tonight. They say it well over 20 sometimes in the movie. If you count all the chants, um, I feel like the, all the characters they brought back, the legacy characters were all wasted or unlikable or stupid. Really, the only reason why I give this movie a pass is because Myers is badass and it's entertaining. I, I can get a kick out of it. I can watch it from front to back and not really be bored aside from that little hospital moments that I feel like shouldn't even be here. And I honestly feel like this is the most mediocre Halloween film in the franchise. It's not necessarily bad. Like, I never hated it or anything, but it's just good enough. You know what I'm saying? It, it just gets the pass mark for me. And I really don't care for Lori in this. Allison's great and Cameron, they kind of redeemed him. But Lori in the hospital just going on and on about the boogeyman. She's trying to act like Shakespeare or something the way she talks. And so is Hawkins beside her in bed. The both of them are talking stupid. And how she thinks she's going to go out there and stop him when she's already been stabbed and all this. It's just stay in bed, woman. Really she we shouldn't have focused on her that much especially in her condition again not a terrible movie but 
kind of a pointless movie. Up next, at number six, we got Halloween H2O. Funny thing about this one, this was the first Halloween movie I ever watched back, it must have been 98, 99, around when it released. Uh, it was rented by one of my brothers, watched it, and I had a decent enough, decent enough time with it. I thought it was pretty creepy in that. I was fairly young at the time. But over the years, this is the Halloween movie that gets worse and worse and worse on every rewatch. Again, still not a bad movie. It's well made. It has a badass uh, final act. Great way to kill Myers at the very end. Really put a nail in his coffin until Resurrection comes along. Um, Lori is handled better than she was in 2018. I feel like with her paranoia and that, handled way better in this film. But the reason why this movie gets worse for me every time is, one, it doesn't feel very Halloween-like, whether you're talking about the franchise or the holiday. It's it's lacking an atmosphere. Uh, we, we miss the score. And Myers is terrible. I hate the way he moves. I hate his portrayal. I hate his mask, how big his eyes are. doesn't matter which Master Tom boat. That one, the CGI one, all of them, they're all bad. Uh, even the hair doesn't look right to me. So that's a big no-no in a Halloween movie when you, you fuck up Myers, right? Um, and the kills are just kind of okay. We don't get a whole lot of standout kills, except for maybe that one in the kitchen. Um, yeah, just an okay movie. Not m much really makes sense, though, why Myers will just appear 20 years later. But we're not supposed to question that type of stuff. But yeah, Lori is badass and great final act. It's just a movie that really went down in my ranking over the years. This was in top three back in the day, and it's just not there anymore. I just don't get the pleasure out of watching it anymore. Not like I used to, but it's still an okay movie and definitely not a bad Halloween movie. Reaching our top five, we got Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Now, we get two cuts to this movie. We get the theatrical and the producers. If we were talking producers cut, I know a lot of people love it, not me. It would literally might be last place in this list. No joke. I hate what they do with the whole incest of Michael and his niece and the stones and the cult stuff is much more prominent in that cut. Story might, might make a little bit more sense, but all the stuff, other stuff they add in just ruins it for me. And the kills aren't as good. So this is going to be based off the theatrical cut. That's where my number five is. And I feel like we get great kills in here. Uh, Michael's brutal and intimidating. A little bit chunky, but that's okay. <laughs> we get a great mask. Um, I like the new score in here, how it's like a kind of like a heavy metal vibe to it, an electrifying vibe. It's uh, different. It mixes things up a bit, but it works. Um, Paul Rudd is corny in the role of uh, Tommy Doyle, but I think he makes it work enough. Loomis, it's great to see him return, and it's unfortunate it's the last time we get to see him, but he does great with whatever he was given um obviously the cult stuff not a big fan of but i mean they kind of had no choice to kind of wrap up the thorn trilogy after what they did with five adding in all that stupid people in black walking around and not explaining nothing and breaking myers out of out of jail and i just gotta mention that jail scene was so stupid just seeing him sitting in there with his mask in part five another reason why it's last place but yeah six i feel like it's not a good movie, but it's really entertaining, and it's one I have a blast watching every time, and I don't really know why, because it probably should be lower in this ranking, but I actually have a really good time with it. It's fun. Um, unfortunately, they had to uh, recast Jamie Lloyd. Well, they didn't have to, but they did. Um, but, I mean, she gets killed off anyway in the first act, so whatever. And, yeah. Yeah. Just a, a decent Halloween movie with great atmosphere, in my opinion. Reaching our top four now. From here on out, these movies are all good. We've made it past the mediocre. Now we're into the good. And at number four, we got Halloween 2. The original Halloween 2. Now, this is another one that was always higher in my ranking. I had this in second place forever in my ranking. But uh, re-watching this for this ranking... Uh, the problems, the flaws stuck out just a bit more to me this time around. But getting into the positives, I think this was a great continuation off of 1978. It takes place the same night and it really feels like it. It feels like it didn't miss a beat. A really smooth transition into the rest of the night right to the hospital. 
Um, hospital is a great setting. Love it. But it feels like it's a little too empty for a hospital, especially on Halloween night. <laughs> Definitely the graveyard shift. And the movie just really kind of slows down once we get there. It does get a bit boring in the middle act. We got a great first act setting things up and a great final act with uh, Lori and Michael Myers. Lori kind of takes a back seat in this one. We don't see too much of her. He's, she's basically bedridden, of course, after the events of part one. And even in the final act, she's more trying to escape and survive than the fight back. But it's still a great final act. And the way they take out Myers in here is the definite way to take him out. And he should have never returned in part four. I uh, love the fire stunt too. And Loomis too went out with a bang. It was uh, just unfortunate. You almost have to undo this ending to bring in part four. They don't undo it, but uh, they make a lame excuse for the return. But we'll get into that. But yeah, Halloween 2, it got some really good kills. Uh, this basically feels more like a Friday 13th movie than a Halloween movie. I think that's maybe why I gravitated more, maybe more towards this in the past. Because I'm a huge Friday 13th fan, if you know me. And uh, talking about the kills, I love the hot tub kill. How he just keeps dumping the head in and out and the skin starts to fall off the face. Myers himself is okay. Not as good at, of a performance as in the first one. He's a little more stiff in this one. But he still does the job and does it pretty good compared to some of the other Myers that we've gotten. And yeah, and overall, it's a decent flick. I have a good time with it. It just slows down a bit in the middle. Now reaching our top three, we got Halloween. 2018 the start of the david gordon green trilogy and i think they did an excellent job with this one it feels like a full film on its own it doesn't rely on the sequels to make this film work because when this came out there was no plans on doing a trilogy it's just because this movie did so well in theaters and made so much money that they decided to make a trilogy out of this but i love that you can just watch this on its own and it it works um, Lori though is a little over the top. I feel like she's a little bit too paranoid and too crazy for it being 40 years gone by, you know, but everything else in this movie just really works for me. It got great cinematography. I love a lot of shots in here and you can just tell the way it was directed that there was a lot of work and a lot of love went into this script um, I don't get mad at, at most of the dialogue in here. Like some people, a lot of people say there's way too much comedy or whatever. There's only that one little line about the peanut butter on his penis that should have never been said, but everything else just kind of works for me. I don't, I don't mind the cops joking around with each other about what they're bringing for lunch and that it just works for me. The kills are pretty, pretty good in this pretty damn good. And I think the final act is a hell of a good time, uh, with the Lori versus Michael. And I like how they kind of have the role reversal throughout this film. Like a lot of things Michael did in the original Lori's doing like standing outside the classroom or falling off the ba balcony and disappearing. I thought that was a really cool little twist to put on this spin, uh, to put on this spin, to put on this movie. But, uh, yeah, just an overall great movie. I don't think it's, uh amazing like some people say but it definitely is one of the better halloween movies in the franchise for sure and that score might be the best score in the entire franchise now in second place i have halloween for the return of michael myers the first time this movie has been at number two in my ranking ever it climbed up a few spots let me tell you uh this always used to be around four or fifth in my ranking but I just absolutely had a blast my last time watching this. It it really has it all. It has great kills, great atmosphere, probably the most fall atmosphere of the whole franchise. You just feel it in that opening. Great performances um, on par with the original or maybe even better in some aspects. Like with Jamie Lloyd as a child actor, the things that she was able to do was very impressive. Loomis is amazing in this and all the supporting characters do a great job like Rachel and all of them. Well, she's more like a main, but yeah, everyone in here gives it their all. Uh, I love Myers with the bandage look. I think that looks really cool. They probably should have stuck with that because he looks stupid as hell in his original mask here. It just looks like something you buy a great, like a great value version of the mask, something you buy at Walmart or something. Looks so bad and his shoulder pads and everything going with it. Like his look is terrible. One of the worst looks in the franchise, to be honest. But 
the he gives a great performance Myers himself and the things he does is awesome like he's brutal and everything and it, this is a great version of Myers if you're not talking about his looks but the one thing that keeps this movie from being amazing for me is like I said the things that happen at the end of part two with the fire and that and how not much really seemed to happen to the characters like uh, Myers yeah he's full of bandages and that but the dude should have been melted to a crisp, like burnt. His mask should have been melted right to his face and everything after the events. Like, there's no way he would have survived that. He would have just burnt up to a crisp. And why would they even try uh, bringing him back if he was, like, barely alive, right? This doesn't make any sense. What makes even less sense is Loomis. Loomis got, like, barely a mark on his face and his hand because I guess he was, like, covering his face. But he was in a room that exploded. There's no reason why he should have survived at all. He's basically supernatural at this point. But Loomis, uh, Donald Pleasance, gives a great performance again. I feel like he's the heart and soul of this franchise, really. Not Jamie Lee Curtis. It was really Donald Pleasance. It's kind of sad that after he passed that the franchise never really felt the same, in my opinion. But yeah, I feel like the mob mentality thing was done way better here than in Halloween Kills. Uh, I love the action scenes, especially like on the rooftop scene with Myers and Rachel and Jamie. I think that's like one of the best scenes in the franchise. Uh, I love the way it ends, the twist with like Myers still on the truck. All that stuff is really cool, very 80s. And the ending. The way this ends, this has to be the best ending out of all the Halloween movies. That twist with Jamie becoming evil. It's just unfortunate it gets completely dropped in H5, but... Yeah, a hell of a sequel and my number two in the franchise. But guys, easily coming in the first place is the original Halloween from 1978. You guys knew it was going to be number one. It is in most people's rankings, not everybody's, but in most people's rankings, the classic Rang Supreme. And a big part of that is John Carpenter's direction. Dude, this created a hell of an atmosphere. All of his shots, his score that he created, everything is just so iconic here. And it was copied so many times from all the slashers that came after it. This may have not been the first slasher, because obviously we had Black Christmas, Psycho, all that stuff before this. But it definitely set the formula for future slashers after this. Uh, the kills aren't real graphic or nothing, but that's not what they were going for. Eh, dude's still scary as hell, doesn't matter how he kills you. Uh, Nick Castle gives the best performance of Myers of the whole franchise and he had nothing to go by and he just made the character work and he made him freaking scary as hell. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is a great final girl, not my favorite final girl, but she definitely does a great job and again sets the template for future final girls to come. Just makes a few minor mistakes or little things at the end with Myers, how she just attacks him and then kind of rests and basically waits for him to get back up where if that was me I would have been booked her out of that house so quick with those kids but besides that she's a great final girl uh most of these characters are fantastic especially Loomis like Donald Pleasance like I said he is the heart and soul of this entire series and his dialogue in this film is second to none like, it's just, it gets under your skin when he gives those monologues about Myers. And he is basically our, he's the person who gives us all of our information that we have on Myers. He doesn't give much, and he, I'm glad he doesn't. He doesn't give away too much. He still keeps the character mysterious, but all of his talk about how evil he is and having the darkest eyes and all that, it just sends chills down your spine. It's that good. Yeah, this is almost the perfect movie. Um... Little nitpicks, but not enough to hurt the, the movie's score, would be like the Annie character. I feel like I don't care for the uh, actress who portrayed her. I feel like she came off a little corny at times. Like I said, Jamie Leake is awesome. And PJ Souls is awesome too as Linda. She may say totally, like totally, way too many totally times if you get what I'm totally saying. But uh, besides that... Uh, everything else in this movie just works to a T. It's great. It's mysterious. And that ending with Myers disappearing is like, it, it. that's the scary part. You're like, he's still out there and you never know when he's going to strike or if he ever will. It's just a classic for a reason. And it easily, guys, comes in the first place for my ranking. 
So there you have it. There's my ranking of all 13 Halloween movies. I can't believe there's that many in this franchise. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I love me my franchises. So this one was a whole lot of fun to rank. I want to hear your guys' rankings down below in the comments section so we can have a discussion. And make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any other future rankings like this. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.